Hello folks, Baldrick here and I have got a cunning plan to get us through them winter months. It's only just coming to August now but sooner or later, sooner in this country because the weather isn't, isn't very good during the winter, to make a blackcurrant Ribena wine. I was talking to somebody and they was telling me about it. Had a look on YouTube and there's a couple of videos on there so I think today we're going to get on and we're going to try and do a nice Ribena wine. So let's crack on and get this lot sorted. Right then, like I was saying, the cunning plan is to do a what basically it's a wine kit, but on the cheap. I mean, a litre of Ribena isn't that cheap anymore. One and a half litres today cost me £4.25. When you weigh it up against buying a wine kit or fruit juices, for instance, it's still a that bit cheaper because we're only using one litre out of this to make uh, six litres in the demijohn of the black brewery, uh, sorry, black currant rye bean the wine. But first, let's have a little slurp. Right now, I do have a lot of new equipment which I've been buying over the last few days, so I have washed it, but. I like to give it a little go over with the star sun. So, do you know what? First of all, this has been wa I've washed this seven times, which may be a bit over the top, but you know what? Uh, it makes me happier, and this is going to flood, I think. Is it? Oh, look at that. We're at right at the brim of that. <laughs> I don't know if you can see that on the camera, but the water's at the top. What I want to do is, I want to fill it with the star sand and just submerge it, just to make sure, I mean, cleanliness with this home brewing is everything, in my opinion, you know. You've, you've got to make sure that everything is as clean as what you can get it. The cleaning products, they're not that expensive. It is a bit of a pain having to do it all, especially when you've got a lot of fermenters and a lot of equipment. But you know what? If you don't do it, it's your money that you're blowing. So you've got to do it to get all of this new stuff in there, as well as a lot of the old stuff, or older. Right, uh, let's get them in. Got myself some new demi drum brushes as well. To get all of this lot in there. Nice new bottling wand that's going in. Come on, fill up, fill up, fill up. There you go, brilliant. Got myself a glass thermometer. Put that nice and gently in there. This is not going to fit, not that bothered. And we've got ourselves a bit of pipe. We do have another fermenter, which is just down there. It's one of those, it's still 25 litres, but it's a little stubby one. But the main thing I wanted to do here was test this lock here, because I've put this tap on and I wanted to test the locking mechanism. So that's looking good at the moment because that is the one that actually attaches there to our bottling wand. So, what we're going to need to kick this off is obviously a pan and our Ribena. I'm going to measure out a litre Woo. because that's all I want to use is a litre of this in here. I'm using stainless steel pan and I've gone for the bigger one instead of a saucepan because I'll get better surface coverage with this. 
And basically what we're going to do is we're going to boil this for 15 minutes because there's preservatives in this Ribena and we want all them preservatives out of this. We don't want them. Another tip, get the original Ribena, not the low sugar one or diet, whatever you want to call it. Don't get that. We want the sugar in this. Oh yeah, lovely jubbly. Right, that lot's doing, that lot's in the pan. I'm going to cut it here, we'll go over to the cooker so you can have a proper look at this, so back in a second. Right then, as you can see, that is bubbling away really, really nice. So, there's a little closer look at it for you. We'll zoom out, like I say, we're looking at around 15 minutes for this so what I want to do is we're going to put in our brewing sugar so let me just get this open mm -mm -mm -mm. Right. and I'm putting the brewing sugar in at this point because I want it all to dissolve into there Okay, let's go in for it. Now, stir it in nice. Now I do have a separate area for a few spoons and that, the stainless steel ones that I use for the home brewing. So, they're always sanitised with the good old star sack. This, uh, I'll tell you what this reminds me of, if you've ever made a blackberry um, pie, because it looks like that uh, type of mixture. Okay. Let's get a bit more of this in. Once we've got all this in, we'll bring it back to the boil and then we can get it in our demijohn. It is going quite clumpy, this sugar, but the thing is with this Ribena, it's quite thick anyway. It's a thick consistency on this. Just be careful when you're putting this in and stirring it for the simple reason this stuff, if it splashes, it's going to stick to you and it will burn you. No two ways about it. Okay, we're almost there. We've got a touch more to go in break these up, get them into smaller clumps, that way they'll dissolve much better. Okay, here's the last bit, and that is a kilo of brewing sugar. And we've had good results with the Wilco brewing sugar. I mean, that one kilo, that comes to £2.50 and I think that it's excellent value for money that is. I mean a lot of people don't use brewing sugar, they'll use granulated. I use Demerara sometimes myself with the brews for the simple reason I like the flavour of it. And up to now I've had no bad aftertastes. So I'm going to carry on with this folks and we'll be back very soon. Okay then, so everything's clean now. We're ready to put our Ribena, as well as the brewing sugar that we mixed in it, into our demijohn here. I've repositioned the cameras because I want you to just pay attention to what's going in here at the moment. So I'm going to go and grab that 
and we're going to put it in that. Let's get our nice big funnel. Right then. Now, hopefully, this is going to pour. Come on, there you go. And it is like a thick syrup at this point. That's it, in your pop. Lovely job lay that has gone in there, an absolute treat, that has. I might actually give that a little swill. Let's try and get all that concentrate off the pan. Okay. Now it is going to be warm this because we, it, we did heat, I mean that is getting roasting, that is. Right, okay. We'll leave it at that. So we're going to put in, we've got some pectolase here and it's a blend of enzyme and dextrose. These are still sealed because I only brought them today. Right, and what we're looking for is one teaspoon. Now, it will get stuck on this funnel because it's, um, it's had that liquid in it, but we're going to pour the water through there anyway. We've also got glycerine. This is used for royal icing. So I have a teaspoon of glycerine. Okay, in your pop. Come on. Right, that's all of that. I also have express wine yeast compound and we also have the Jervin yeast, we've got the Express Wine Compound and at a later date we've got the A and B wine finings. We've also got to put in here, which I've just spilt the bloody lot everywhere, because the bag the seal has opened. <laughs> oh, I tell you man, fantastic isn't it? We've also got some citric acid, so grab another spoon because we've got all the glucose stuck to that one and let's have it looks just like granulated sugar this does let's have one of those in there okey doke that's that right let's give that a bit of a swish around let's get that mixing because next we're going to put in our cold water and I've brought a bottle of it today and I've had it in the freezer for the last half hour because I wanted it to get super cool so I'll be back in a second. Right then, we've had a little clean up mission, Baldrick style of course, so I think we'll have a little slurp to celebrate. Right then, we've got our natural mineral water like I say I've had this in the freezer for about half an hour to get it chilled just that little bit more so we're going to top this up I'm getting everything off that funnel the lot is coming off that's brilliant that is okay Put that there a minute. I'm going to cover the demijohn. I want to give this a nice mix. The bottom of this glass is roasting, so you can tell what the temperature was when we had it on the hob there. But look at that, it's a fantastic colour. And it, it smells very nice, it does smell sweet, I've got to be honest. It does smell very sweet. Right, let's top this up. Right then, we've got it topped up now, 
to our desired height, not pitched any yeast yet and I've not put the yeast additive and express wine compound in there as yet. What I want to do is take a reading, so we can check the gravity. Think. Hydrometer, where's my hydrometer? There you be. Right then. Let's get all the bubbles off. Let's give her a little spin. Oh, whoa, come on. Right, we're going quite high on this. So I can't read it. Right, it looks like 1.022 Because it's on the red band, black on red, it's extremely hard to see the bloody thing. Is that 2.2? Or is it 2.2? Okay, it's 1.022 folks. Right, okay. Now, because all of this lot and this has been sterilised, I'm going to put that back in there, but I'm going to have a little tester. It, it's bitter. It's bitter. <laughs> We've sweet. Uh, I, don't, I, I don't know, um, it is bitter and sweet. Right, we've got a few more things now that we need to finish this off to give my hands a quick swirl because this stuff is very sticky. So I think we're gonna come back and once this has cooled down we will get on the go with it and put in our yeast. Let's check the temperature. So, it isn't that warm to be honest, that, that water has cooled it down. We're on 12 degrees it's not moving off the 12 degrees, let's go a bit lower. See, it's even cooler as you go lower. It's going down to 10 degrees, that is. Okay, I'm happy with that. Right, like I said, we've got a couple of things more that we've got to do, so we'll do that soon. Okay then folks, like I said, a couple of things to do. I've had two tea bags in a glass of hot water because I wanted it to brew up nice and strong. We'll be using that for our tannings, so let's get this in. And I'm not sure if you're going to be able to see that. As you can see, it's quite dark. Nothing else in there except the tea. Right, that's our tannings in. We want, we've got the Jervin Universal Wine Yeast formulated to produce exceptional results with rapid fermentation for most country wine recipes. But uh, yeah, there you go, come on, that's it. Now, I will be putting in just a little bit of water to get this down because it's going to stick in that funnel. We've also got the express wine yeast compound formulated to ferment quickly and cleanly, sufficient for five gallons, 
and perfect for all wine recipes. Now we'll be putting in one teaspoon of this. Like I was saying, this will be, it's got a very mild yeast smell that us. This will be part of the beers and wines and spirits that I'll be doing for Christmas. Okay, that's in there. I'll give it a little shake now. I'm going to rinse that out very slightly. How much we got in? I'm just making sure it's all off that funnel. Okay, I think that is the best. I'm going to get it. So let's put in our bung and I want to just very slightly give that a little swish around. Our temperature was good on here so I'm happy with that. Where are we? Let's get our airlock in. Come on. There we go, yep, brilliant. Fallway's got a few bottles of Star Sand mixed. Because it doesn't matter if we get a bit going to there with the Star Sand. Okay, it's come over a little bit. I've put too much in as per usual. Is that too much? Okay, that should be alright like that. That is our rye bean, our black currant rye bean, a wine. And if our cunning plan all works out, we shall be putting the A and B findings in there and having a nice little. Well, we, we should get probably six litres of wine out of this. Give or take, we'll, uh, we'll have to see. But this is my first ever wine. I was going to do a Chardonnay wine kit, but I thought, you know what? I want to give that Robin a want to go because, like I say, there's a couple of videos on YouTube for it. And, you know, they're not too bad. I thought I'd give it a go myself and get the video up there myself, but what I'll do is I'll give you a little look at this. So you can see what it looks like. I know there's no light going into it, but as you can see that yeast nutrients and yeast are settled in there pretty well. So oh I think we might get something good out of this one, folks. So, I've been Baldrick for this video anyway. I hope you enjoyed it. We're always doing new wine brew recipes. I've got the new stuff that I'll be doing soon. We'll be doing uh, a winter warmer, plus some liqueurs coming up to the Christmas, but a couple of months at least ahead. So, we've got it working away. So we've got a nice tipple for Christmas bicycler. And if you get it all working for you, you can wait that couple of months for the Christmas period. And then you've got a nice few beers to go with, wines, etc. So I hope you enjoyed it, folks. If you did, come back and catch me in the next episode. I've been Baldrick, as I said before, and I'll catch you soon. Bye for now.